So you guys were one. I'm hearing all you guys. You guys wanted the theme song shortened, so here we go. This girl reviews movies, games, and books. Sometimes she plays them. So does that. And when she does it with the cat, does that make her crazy? Does that make her crazy? Probably. <laughs> so, it's shorter. There you go. <laughs> Crazy Cat Lady or Martha Butler does not own the any trailers or pictures. I use them under fair use. Educational for edu and entertainment purpose. Hey everybody, Martha here. So today we're doing Peacemaker Season 1. Um, so this show was, the show is it's pretty funny. Um, like, James Gunn likes to put a lot of CGI characters in their, his, his, their movies now, it's a TV show. I, this one doesn't talk, but acts completely like an eagle. You, you didn't know a CGI, you would think it's a real eagle. <laughs> That's how good it is. But, look, the fact that he just names the eagle -y, like, this is... So, this is a real pet. My cat, my, my dog, Vidoria. This is what a pet you expect to have, even though it's silly that you usually eat out of a cup. Hi, everybody, Martha here. So, today we're going to show you guys how to make a corgi's head disappear. <laughs> <laughs> she really likes that soup. <laughs> So that's it, guys. Hope enjoy. Bye bye. I can't keep my head out. Bye bye. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a dog pet you get to have, not eagle, not pet eagle. But like everything, the pet eagle hugs him, and uh, you don't. And he hunts for him. You, you think he's gonna die? You think he's gonna be dead for, one, for, for like most like one fourth of the episode, right after his dad punches the bird. But, and we had like two different villains in this movie. In, in this, this season, we have um the butterflies, and um. Peacemaker's dad, which even after how many years since it been since 1992, this guy still can be scary because he, he's the second he's the second Terminator, the one that's addressed as a cop in that movie, and he's still just as scary as he was back then. It doesn't matter is he, is he playing a, a robot or or somebody who is very, very racist. This movie. I mean, even his followers. They remind me of me with the K, the KKK. Like they're wearing a white sheet over their head. I don't care if they have horns. This is what they remind me of his followers. Once it, like, I like all the characters in this series, basically. Um, they, they serve their, all their purposes, even the small ones. And, like, the, the part I mostly like, I watched the theme song every single time I watched the show. I did not skip it. It was annoying that every time I wanted to watch it, I saw the skip, I'm like, I don't want to skip this. It's a great song, and I like the fact that they, these characters, 
none of these actors can dance and like none of them are but really and and i like the song a lot and makes me like every time i hear james Gunn, it makes me real makes me want to wish it was back around when these songs were made because <laughs> i was not alive back during only like the last um year of the 80s but i don't remember it so i don't count my so yeah so he always knows how to make a good song soundtrack uh, I, he always knows how to pick the right songs to go in his movies and now tv show and i like i actually like these two things more than the Guardians of the Galaxy, because <laughs> it's he's restricted in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's not let it be the, his full self. He should only do rate. He should only do rated R movies. He should not be restricted to PG thirteens movies, because he can't be as real funny as he is. I mean, this movie, this show, can be serious because of what happens to what. what Peacemaker did when he's a kid to his brother. That's a very serious subject. Pushing his brother too hard. Because his dad wanted them to fight, so both of them would be killers. And blaming his son for his whole entire life. And loving the dead brother. More. I mean, it kind of reminded me of the whole entire thing that happened with um, uh, on Lord of the Rings with Formir and um, Denethor about Formir. That this relationship just reminded me of that. Even though Formir did not kill Formir, but the way he like treats his dead son reminds me of that situation. Yeah, the fact that he'd rather have the dead son rather have the rather the fact that he wished he died instead. And he, he did care about him, sat um, in a weird way because he, he said he could have killed him. And he had, in his way, in his view, he had every, in his view, he had all the reasons to. Never, like I said, his view. I don't think what he's, think him killing his son's right, but <sighs> he could have done it, but he didn't do it, and he took care of his pet while he was in jail. So yeah. And we get to meet Waller's daughter. She's um, she's a great character. Um, John's a great character. We didn't, and we got to see both um, hardcore and John in the movie. Um, so so it's Side Squad, and but there are small parts in that movie. But we get to really get to know them more in this movie. One is a guy that. Who doesn't want to be part of this job? It's the only job you probably can get at once. A hard one of those those, those girls who are, are strong, but she doesn't like the fact that everybody wants to be with her for that reason. And I think I'm happy that, that she's just more than just that because there's so many girls nowadays who are just in movies that are just the strong um, woman in character and. Because everybody, because we have, we can't no more gentle than stresses. So when they actually do one that's right, I'm, I like it. And she ends up being the leader, and and you think this at the end, like end of the show, she might die, but no, her and her, her and um, Peacemaker's relationship in this in this episode in the series is really great. The way like the way he ends up caring for her. Way of caring for him. She tells him his her real name, and and you feel sorry for the the butterfly that was working for them with them when he dies because he sacrifices himself to the butterflies, and you find out later the butterflies don't want to rule the world. Well, they kind of do, but they want to stop us from destroying the planet. 
but they don't want to give us a choice in the matter. So, I count that as still rule in the world. If you don't give us a choice. So, and Peacemaker still doesn't kill Garth, the head um, butterfly. After all this, he still keeps it as a pet and still feeds it. So, and even after the dad dies, um, it's like a ghost is haunting him. He just never can let it go. And Anabayu just tells him, you cannot let your dad did to you your whole life rule you. And this episode shows us really funny and dark and everything, and I love it. I almost didn't watch it. Instead, I picked to watch Stoop. I uh, picked to watch Book uh, Bubble Fett. I mean, I I first didn't like the fast uh, fact that I heard that he called Batman a pussy. Like, how dare he? But I don't like he lays everything he reads on the internet. So makes sense he would believe all this stuff <laughs> so it's a really good show hope you guys go so go watch it i mean it makes it worth paying for 15 dollars off hbo max to watch it i still think that's too much i also like um vigilante in this everybody thinks he's like deadpool but i don't I can see why they would think that Deadpool breaks fourth walls and says stupid things, but he, uh, with this guy, he, he, I'm happy we got like, a, a version of Vigilante, but it's, um, I don't know if that's his real name, and because an, um, an arrow, uh, Adrian Chase was, plays, um, a different character, was, was a different um, villain, not not vigilante. He was Prometheus, so it's like though you combine those two characters. But vigilante is a lot better in this show than he is in the Arrow, and I like the fact that he even reference Arrow in this in this show. So I just wanted to add that <laughs> money for our streaming service. So I'll see you guys later. Like, share, subscribe, and bye-bye.